Welcome to our staff. Welcome to our residents uh, to the uh, Public Safety Committee meeting. So, uh, Commissioner Brockington, before I turn it over to you, a uh, quick announcement. The board met in executive session prior to this evening's public meeting to discuss personnel issues and legal issues, which, if discussed in public, would violate a lawful privilege. With that statement, Commissioner Brockington, public safety, it's all yours. Thank you. I'm calling the public safety meeting for January 12th, 2022. Uh, we're going to start now with the report from our police chief, item one. Um, chief, welcome. Thank you, sir. Cleveland. Good. Are Thank there any much. questions? The, the reports are attached um, and commissioners had time to read it. Are there any questions for our chief in reference to the latest reports and the numbers in our township? Chief, I do have one. Yes, uh, Looks like we're seeing sort of a little tick and uh, I guess reduction in um, like death. Like, uh, was there a lot of that going on in reference to shoplifting? Like, and this is November, so I guess it wouldn't be the Christmas report yet. Yes, but sir, are we, we did, still seeing a lot of shoplifting? We did see an increase in, in November for shoplifting, approximately 14 or 15 cases uh, increased from uh, a year prior. So we did see a spike in that. We're still underneath our, our year, project, year projections for 21 as we compare to 22. Um, we're still under under those. So that's uh, it is a spike there. We saw a spike in some other thefts like uh, theft from auto, the catalytic converter thefts. We saw uh, those type of things yeah. impact the number of thefts we've seen. Um, and we put that information out on our website to let our residents know. Okay. Yeah, Thank actually, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, yes, Commissioner North. No, I appreciate you pointing out uh, theft. Well, thefts are down. I guess the most concerning one I had was the armed robbery. Uh, it, the, the numbers for November and also for year to date. Yes, sir. There was an increase there as well. Um, we've had several uh, armed robberies uh, in, the, in the last month or so. Um, contributed to a number of reasons. I'm sure uh, you know, uh, some of them being financial and people on hardships and um, taking chances that they, you know, they probably normally wouldn't take. Um, but uh, yeah, we've had several incidents that were pretty serious incidents, and thank God they were, you know, no one was seriously injured. We did have a stabbing in uh, Mellor's Park at the smoke shop uh, in that month, um, where the clerk was stabbed there. Um, but thankfully, she survived that uh, incident and uh, is on the mend. Um, but yeah, this is something obviously very serious that we, you know, we take that uh, very serious these type of crimes there, and uh, we try to let our business community know what's going on as well, so they're aware. Are we seeing these armed robberies in any particular um, locations or is it sort of spread out? We've had, a, uh, I would say spread out along our, our Southern border. Uh, Commissioner probably would be the best answer for that. Um, we saw a couple in Melrose Park. Um, we saw a couple around the mall. Um, Luma Guards, we saw a couple there as well. So um, we're seeing it kind of spread out along that Southern border, to be honest. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions in reference with the police chief's report? All right, so we're going to move on to item 1A. Well, I'm sorry, item 1B. I recommend. The, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's go back to 1A. I'm going to call for the approval of the police clearance and juvenile report for the month of November 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I'm um, going to go on down to item 1B. I recommend that the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to CoStar in the amount of 170 $7,750 for the purchase slash replacement of five four interceptor mm -hmm. utility police vehicles. Um, and that invoice is attached. Are there any questions? So um, uh, I do have a question. Um, yes, Commissioner Harvey. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I guess a question in a statement. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, one of my concerns with this um, is of where we are in the calendar and not having a really solid read on what revenue looks like in relation to um, this expenditure. So I was gonna ask Chief if uh, there's a possibility that the uh, PO could be approved later in the year and still receive a delivery of the vehicles in 2022 uh, when we have a better read on revenue and any remaining impact from COVID. Sir, Commissioner, um, 
just the information I received recently on this is the Ford has a lead time of approximately 30 weeks as of January 12th. Um, the dealer estimates an early cutoff for these vehicles in the next few weeks uh, based on lead times exceeding other models already closed out for 2022. Um, this means we need to order them sooner than later, um, our 22 cars, um, and you know, we won't see them built probably till the fall of 2022 as of now, um, just so we're aware of, the, of the, the impact a possible delay could cause. I understand what you're saying, and just that's what I was given today. Uh, the impact of that would be that if we were delayed uh, significantly, it would even push it back even further. And if I could add, Commissioner, um, just so you know, it's all three automakers. Um, we, as you'll see later in the thing, are, are um, going to ask permission to buy a Dodge. And <laughs> if we didn't find one at old pricing, they were predicting December. Um, and Chevy has already cut off the Tahoes. So um, my, my guess is, knowing that industry a little bit, if you wait, you won't get the cars. Yep, th thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions or concerns about item 1B? Commissioner Pransky, did I see a finger go up there, sir? Only on the side of my face, holding it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm calling um, for the approval of item 1B. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any yeah, opposed? Aye. I'm, I'm going to vote nay, but I'm, I'm going to vote nay primarily because of my concern around the COVID impact and not that, you know, we don't want to get cars on the road this year, um, but I just, I think it's a little too early and I would feel more comfortable looking at, you know, March, April-ish, but I understand the uh, supply chain concern and everything surrounding it, but uh, my vote is nay and uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. We're moving on to item 1C, recommend that the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order, sorry, uh, order to Cody Systems in the amount of $17,570.52 for the annual support from January 1, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. Chief, I'm gonna ask if you can just give a little explanation on what that is. Yes, Cody is our uh, records management system, excuse me. Um, it's our record management system. This covers the uh, standard RMS cost, the annual support costs involved in uh, maintaining our, our records management system. Um, this is an annual fee that we pay uh, to uh, Cody. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, I'm calling for the approval of item 1C. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> On to item 1D. Recommend that the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to the Pennsylvania Chief of Police Association in the amount of $7,000 for live scan and CPNI maintenance fees for 2022. Chief, give us an explanation also on that. Yes, sir, Commissioner. This is our live scan and CPN uh, prisoner processing machine we have here. Um, this is the annual fee uh, that we pay each year to Pennsylvania State Police to have this um, so we can process our prisoners, photograph, fingerprint, that kind of stuff. Um, it's a necessity that we have. It also includes any maintenance uh, issues uh, for the year of 2022 as well. Thank you. Any questions from commissioners? <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to call for the approval of item 1D. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to 1E, e, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to the Montgomery County Community College in the amount of $5,995 for the Police Academy training for Marcus Dupree from January 3rd, 2022 through June 13th, 2022. I think we kind of know what that is. Um, any questions or concerns from our commissioners? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Commissioner. Uh, if, the police, uh, if the police uh, chief could uh, explain that a little bit. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. go ahead. Um, that cost to Montgomery County Community College is the police academy we sent uh, Mr. Dupree to. Um, he'll be graduating in June 13th of uh, 2022. Uh, following the training. It's the mandatory uh, requirement training that all our officers are required to go. It's called Act 120 training. Um, and that would be the cost of uh, the program is uh, $5,995. So Chief, is uh, that six-month training um, all new recruits who, who don't have prior experience? Yes. If they are not 120 certified, Act 120 right. certified right. training. So this is Police Academy training for our new hire. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Commissioner Rappaport. Yes, just, thank you. Just following up on that, um, and I appreciate the reasoning why we, why we support that, but I do wonder, is there any kind of um, time frame of service after uh, we um, take care of the training or any other kinds of obligations that, that uh, the new trainee then has to us? That's a very good point, Commissioner. Um, I could certainly run that by uh, the manager. We could speak of that. Um, since the cost, I understand what you're saying. If someone were to come and leave you three months later, they say, see you later. We're willing to hope for the cost. I could certainly speak to the manager regarding that. Um, there are procedures in place. There is something we could probably do with that. Just so you know, we do get reimbursement back from the state uh, for the cost of this, a partial reimbursement uh, for this while the person's in the academy. That So we, uh, we looked into all those avenues uh, when we considered this proposal and we presented them and uh, that was part of our decision to, to move forward with this as well, knowing we were gonna get some of that money back from the state as well. Thank you. Chief, Chief and thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Chief, do you have any idea what the percentage or the amount of that reimbursement would be at this I point? I don't know offhand right now, Commissioner, I don't wanna give you the wrong information, but we do get a partial reimbursement for the, to, to, for the tuition uh, salary okay. there um, uh, for the officer to attend. So um, I could get that information for you and, and get that to you. I just, yeah, I would. I oh, would I'm sorry, like there right now, you. one second. 75% we get reimbursed. Okay. Also Fantastic. To also, to <laughs> I just happened to walk down the hallway when you said that. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> yes. Go ahead, Bob. Just to add uh, the advantage, and I know Commissioner Rappaport, to maybe your point, this helps us add diversity to our police, oh, police force. Without a, doubt. That. Without a doubt. And, and um, I, I agree with you. I think something between the chief and myself we can work on you know, some type of commitment that, you know, we are putting the money out, even though we're being reimbursed, that there should be some commitment of at least a year. Yeah, I'm confident that you're going to stay with us. So. Yeah, no. And I, and there's no question at all. I know we pushed for we pushed that for this. change mm -hmm. um, several years ago. So yes. I'm in complete favor of right. it. Just asking, I couldn't remember, frankly, if we had uh, attached any, uh, sort of obligations. So. I will follow with the manager on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions in reference to item 1E? Uh, Seeing none, I'm calling for the approval of item 1E. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Item 1F, recommend the Board of Commission approve a purchase order to Chris Boyle Law Enforcement Consulting LLC in the amount of $5,841 for the 2022 monthly case law update membership renewal. Chief, give us an explanation of this. Yes, sir. Um, this item here, um, I did not budget for in 2022. Um, this wasn't available when I submitted my budget request for 2022. Um, so um, when this came to light, this opportunity came to light, I thought it was a valuable tool for our officers to have. It provides update training on civil liability and criminal law that officers receive monthly. Um, uh, the the, officer, the uh, gentleman that runs this name, Chris Boyle, was an attorney with Marshall Dennehy. He was our attorney who represented us many years uh, in civil actions regarding police uh, um, lawsuits. Um, he's an, an expert in, in the numerous areas of uh, liability. I just think it's a benefit to our department. Um, I wouldn't take that out of asset forfeiture since we did not budget for that would be my uh, request. Since I could not get that in time for the 2022 budget request, I would like to do that for this year is to take that money from the asset forfeiture fund and then pay for that. I think it's a valuable, worthwhile service. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Any questions? Commissioner Thank Zygmunt. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Zygmunt Bell. Uh, Chief, how, how do you, you, know, you implement or, or do organize the training or the things that are, are being brought by uh, the Chris Boyle group? In other words, is it in group sessions with, with all the staff? Is it just with it's, the it's leadership and officers? How, how is that put into play? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's distributed to the entire department on a monthly basis via email. Um, and it's specific topics to current law, <clears throat> current issues that rise up. He tries to keep it current on what's going on around the world. Uh, so our officers are, are, are up on Pennsylvania law and how it would impact them. Like I said, it's not only the civil liability end, it's office, office, uh, criminal cases as well for officers to look at as well for guidance on that. I really see this as a worthwhile tool. I think it's a benefit. It's one more thing I can do to prepare our officers to provide that professional police service we ask them to. Thank you. 
So, Chief, I have a question. So you're saying this is not sort of a training class. This is just a series of emails that are sent periodically to the officers. This is a, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, sir. And it's up for them to sort of read it and stay up, you know, stay up on this. Yes, sir. What, what Chris does, he breaks the case down, looks at the pros and cons and how the courts ruled and gives officers guidance on how to proceed when they run into a similar situation like that. Here's the case law. Here's what's out there. Here's how we can, you know, we can proceed within the confines of the law. Any, any questions, commissioners, concerning this particular item? Yeah, I'll ask one more question. Sorry. Yes, Commissioner um, Norris. Um, following up on what you were just saying, Irv, um, since it's an, an email, I know it's referred to as a membership, and so perhaps I'm violating some, uh, some rules of their membership, but is it not possible, I'm thinking something like a uh, New York Times that comes in via email uh, to send it around to the rest of the office? This is uh, case specific stuff that Chris puts together. Uh, like I said, based on what's going on around uh, Pennsylvania at the time, what he's seeing, what they're seeing out there um, based on his experience as a uh, trial attorney. And he provides that information to our officers so they can look at it on a monthly basis as a guide to use when they encounter sim similar situations. Like I said, it covers both civil liability issues and criminal law issues. If you don't have any, any way of monitoring whether your officers are will be reading this because it's really it's, it's for them to do i guess on their free time sort of checking their email so you really don't have any way of saying oh yeah you know they they read these they're, they're reading these things at all i could do we could do that record they're required to check their email uh, on a regular basis so this would be emailed to everyone um we could look at possibly uh, how we could how we could uh, follow up with that um i haven't really thought about that this person, Chris Boyle, is, is, is a well-known uh, expert in uh, police liability law. Our officers all know him. I have him as a guest speaker at our uh, supervisory uh, meeting we have every year. I just had him here uh, back at the end of uh, December um, where I had him speak to our sergeants. And it's about current, current issues facing policing. He's a respected, well-known expert in the area. And I think it's a valuable uh, asset for us to do this. Mr. Chair. Commissioner, Commissioner Armin. Yeah, uh, Chief, um, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not questioning the value of of the service. Um, I'm noticing, sort of, following on uh, Commissioner Norris's question, that that there's a quantity here for, uh, of 59. Is that is that like a per head cost? That may be an estimate. That may be an estimate on how many he was provided on how many how many officers are going to get it. It's so going to go department wide. My, yeah, it's go department wide. So my my question is. Is this something that could go to um, command staff and be be sent uh, at, at a, perhaps a lower rate and then be disseminated through roll call or something like that to bring people up to speed? Um, or, do, or is there a requirement for the service that you uh, pay for every single officer in the department? I would have to look at that exactly, uh, Commissioner. I don't, I don't know that either way. Um, before I answer your question, I would have to research to make sure I give you good advice on that. Maybe, maybe there's a way to, to um, reduce the cost a little bit if, if we went back and, and only had it for the for you know the sergeants or, or something like that so it could get disseminated that way. As I said, I think it's that important the this, this service that we take it from the asset forfeiture fund and not the township budget to get this out to our officers to give them that tool to help them do their job better. And that's how I that's that's I keep saying the same thing. What I'm saying that's how yeah. I see the value in that being. Um, for our, our, our officers to rely on that when they have a question on stuff like that. Chris is also available when there is a question arises. Well, so the, my, my point, mailing. I think my point is that it, not only not only do we perhaps save on the asset forfeiture funds, but okay. also it addresses Commissioner Brockington's uh, concern about ensuring that people are actually getting the information. If it goes out in roll call, that then you have some accountability there too. I understand, Commissioner. I can look at that and then get back to the board. Is that all right? Sense to me. Yeah. So, um, thanks, thanks everybody. So, let's say what item one F. We're going to table that till next item month. for now. We'll table that for next month. See if you can come back and give us some information about thank that. You. Thank so, you. we're going to go on to item one Mr. G. Which uh, is, Mr. I'm Mr. sorry, Chief. Commissioner Holland. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really quickly, I was just going to make a recommendation that if if the chief can get the information before. Uh, the third Wednesday, Wednesday. maybe okay. on it this month. 
Yeah, yeah I, I like that. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. See, did you hear that? No, I'm no, sorry. Commissioner Holland. Commissioner Holland. Commissioner, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I was going to say, Chief, if you could get the the information that we're looking for before the end of this month, maybe we can vote on it this month and get it started. Thank you, sir. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. So we're going to move on now to item 1F, which is to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order. No, that's 1G. <laughs> recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to the Upper Dublin Township in the amount of $5,000 for the Montgomery County SWAT Eastern Regional Team assessment. Chief, give us an explanation. Yes, sir, Commissioner. This is our uh, Cheltenham Township's portion of our SWAT team, uh, our annual dues to the SWAT team uh, for Eastern Montgomery County SWAT. Uh, each, each municipality pays their portion of it, and that's our portion. Okay. <laughs> Any questions, Commissioner Chairman? Norris? Yeah. Uh, Chief, can, can you just remind us, I think we've been told before, uh, townships like Abington and Springfield, uh, what do they do as far as SWAT? I, uh, I don't see them listed. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abington is still on her own. Um, as far as they're, they're not a member of the Eastern Montgomery County SWAT. Um, Springfield Township is a member of the Colonial. The, it would be the other side of uh, Montgomery County they're part of. Um, so they would be part of the, our regional team. They're part of another regional team. Um, and Abington is independent on their own. Um, really, when we get to these jobs, we all rely upon one another. Um, we're not going to not come, in, uh, come to an aid of a fellow agency that way. But, um, as far as I know, they're, they do their own thing. Springfield Township is part of another region's SWAT uh, program. Do we have other costs for participating in this SWAT besides this five five thousand? That's our that's our contribution from our department. That's all I'm aware of. Okay, so other than that, we we have some individual officers who might participate in training or exercises or meetings. We may get training, yes, sir. That's that's fair. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Norris. Any other? Commissioners? Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you. Um, do we know what the others in our consortium are paying? Uh, is everybody paying the same amount? Is it based on uh, size? What's it based on? Yes, I believe in the Eastern Montgomery County, it's an equal split for everyone to pay that amount. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on. Calling for the approval of item 1G. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to 1H. Recommend the Board of Commission approve a purchase order to the Visual Computer Solutions, VCS, in the amount of $4,561.04 for the annual software support for the police scheduling systems from February 1, 2022 to January 31st, 2023. Chief? Yes, sir, Commissioner. This is our, our scheduling service. Um, that we, we prescribe to each year. This is the annual fee uh, and support fee for this. Um, this covers things such as our, our lineups, our daily lineups, car assignments, time off, um, vacation, off-duty details. It's our tracking system that we use here at the department, and it's our yearly. This is a yearly annual fee that we pay uh, for the for the annual uh, support and service. Any questions from commissioners? Saying none, I'm calling for the approval of item 1H. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to 1I, recommend a board commission approve a purchase order to Lexpool in the amount of $4,480 for the Police One Academy annual service training. So, so let us know what's the difference between this and the other training that we're paying for. Okay, sir. This is a new this is a new program that we're signing up for. Uh, it's Police One Academy, um, and what it what it involves is um, it, it helps us meet our plea act standard requirements by providing officers the opportunity to attend to attend training. It could be a fifteen minute training, it could be a one hour training, or it could be an extended training. That's one of the that's one of the nice things about this. It offers flexibilities. Officers can log on, take a, a class in a myriad of things, from implicit bias to um, you know, dealing with people with mental illness, to uh, the law on uh, search and seizure. It, it's a, a wide variety of topics that's covered in this program. And uh, it's something I think it's gonna be a benefit to our department again, in offering training opportunities to our officers to help professionalize the department. And Chief, you're saying this is something that we haven't done before, this is new? This is new, yes, sir. Okay. So who decides? Um, who takes the who training? goes right? 
mm -hmm. goes. Right. This is offered to every officer in the department to sign up for. Um, they, all they can do is log, we'll get a log on. We have a log on for each officer in the department, including myself. Log on to something that's, that's a topic that you wish that, that we need to, to uh, address. We can also use it for our mandatory re training requirements for our PLEAC. So it also gives us the benefit to push out training to our officers to meet that requirement as well. And then to give them an opportunity to attend trainings to improve themselves through this, through this training program. Is this, Chief, is this mandatory for your officers? Not the plea act, not the other one, but is it mandatory for your officers to take this training? And if so, how much? Some of it would training? be, depending on, on what we're looking at, for uh, like the accreditation end of it. We may have to document certain things that we're, that we're, we're covering, like the implicit bias training and those, th those types of things. We may document that for our, our future accreditation that we're providing this training to our officers. Um, so that would be the example. Um, we can track the involvement and success of this completion of each course. Um, we get we get a follow up on each each officer that completed a course, so we can get a determination on how successful this is and how many people are are using this down the road. So, like I said, I think it's also another tool we can give our officers to improve their skill set and, and provide professional police service to our residents. One other question: What happens if an officer goes, oh, "I'm not taking it"? Is there any repercussions or anything for an officer who doesn't log in and doesn't take my one of the training courses? I don't have I don't have discipline in place for that. It'd be something that I would strongly encourage the sergeants to encourage officers to take this opportunity. Uh, the nice thing about this, it offers that flexibility. It doesn't tie an officer up for eight eight hours. It's you have 15, there's fifteen minute blocks on certain things. It would be like a refresher course to keep you on track of something maybe you don't deal with often. Like the approach, how to approach somebody with a mental illness, for example, you know, maybe they give you a 15 minute blurb on that. So you're, you know, refreshes your skills on that area and gives you some information you may have forgotten on. So that's just an example. It offers that flexibility in the, to, to go and say, okay, you can take a shorter one, a medium sized one or an extended training on this, depending on what the topic is. What, will you, do you get a report back from Lex Pool on what officers took what course? Yes. I mean, Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Pransky. Yeah, that's me. See, all the fingers are up. Um, and the heads of five stone. Uh, Chief? Yes, sir. Um, when you look at candidates for promotion, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you look at their record and you look at their basic resume of what they've accomplished. Yes, sir. Is there a way to let them know that if this is on there, it's in your favor? If it's not on there, it's not necessarily in your favor. Yes, sir. We could impart that as well. I mean, uh, that's something that's looked at when we do these evaluations, when you go for promotions, you know, tell me about yourself and what have you done here? Um, that's probably the third question there. Uh, they're going to ask you, well, tell me what you've done to separate yourself and prepare yourself for this job. Um, we're always looking to have our people prepared and provide them the opportunity to better their skills and improve their skills. So that's how I look at this commissioner. And I think that is important that when it comes time for that, that they're, that they're putting in the hard work to that to better themselves. It's terrific. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, Commissioner Armin. Yeah, Chief, um, if you identify a particular officer who may, um, in your opinion, require improvement in a particular area, is this a tool that you think you might be able to use in that regard? Absolutely. And it offers that, offers that flexibility where we can do that if someone needs some remedial training and something along those lines. You have it at your fingertips. Poor writing, it's there. That's the value in it, I believe. That's, I agree. Uh, that's a very good point. I think that's a that's a an option that we would take full advantage of. Fair enough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Norris. Uh, Chief, um, I'm uh, still uh, uncertain on the asset forfeiture fund. Can you remind me? Is something uh, like this activity, this uh, uh, annual service training, is it eligible to be paid for by the asset forfeiture fund? Um, I actually made this a, a budget request item. The difference in between this one and Mr. Boyle's presentation was I did not get that budget request in um, in time for that. So that's why I, that's why I went the other route with that to try to uh, provide that service. This I, this is a line item that I budgeted for. Um, and I think that I would have to look at that and see how that would impact that. But I think if it's a line item budgeted that, that they may cause some some difficulty in how I use that. I would have to look at that. OK, that answer your question, sir. And yes. Chief, this is this is completely new. This has never been done before in our town. No, sir. You know, it's fine. OK, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Holland. Everybody else commented, so I figured I'd, I'd throw one. <laughs> in. 
Uh, Chief, this is uh, <laughs> it really, really great tool. Um, and, you know, something that just jumped out at me. So you have this Chris Boyle Law Enforcement Consulting tool that's pushing out information. Um, I don't know if it's statewide or countywide, but case law information. Um, I, I think it would be really good if, if you see something that comes through there that, that, you know, catches your eye and then you tie that back in to this Lexapool and see if there's any training that could reinforce anything that comes through yes, sir. that is either impacted from the state or the county. And, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to say mandate because that's a taboo word with all the, 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 the masking and stuff going on, but highly recommend uh, that officers, you know, take the 15 minute training or whatever it is, because it came, you know, something came through Chris Boyle and it's like a hot topic. Yes, sir. Um, I think that's a, that would be a really good, opportunity to have each one of those tools reinforce each other. Yes, um, so, you know, thank you for identifying this as, as an opportunity for the force. And that, that's right on what my thinking is, Commissioner. I'm, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you with that. I think that's a great idea. Great. All right. So there is no other questions. We're going to call for the approval of item 1I. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We're going to move on to the next item. I recommend that the Board of Commission approve a purchase order to Devo and Associates LLC in the amount of $2,749.88 for modem kits for the parking kiosk. Yes, sir. Chief. Yes, sir. Commissioner, these are the two parking kiosks, one in Glenside and one in Elkins Park. Um, this is to upgrade those two kiosks to a 4G modem uh, from the current 3G. Uh, upgrade our credit card capability and the new cell phone capability. Um, it's, it's requiring the upgrade to that. Uh, and I think there's a benefit in us doing that uh, as well. Um, so we could you know, continue to use these uh, kiosks most effectively. Yes, Commissioner Chief, Francis. It says, it says three on the invoice. Sorry. It's 4G, nine. I, I, no, I, it, said, it says that you're purchasing three of them. You, you're buying oh, three of those. Three motives, yes. So where's the other one going? One Elkins, one Glenside. Put in your house, sir. There you go. I like it. Uh, let me let me ask that. I just noticed that myself. I didn't notice that. Hold on, give me one second, please. They, they said that there's you two in Glenside. I'm sorry. There's two. There's one at the Glenside Pub, and there's one back at the other municipal route, right? That's right. Glenside and Wesley. All right. I, that's that's the clarification. All right. Commissioner Harmon. Commission two in Glenside, one in Elkins Park, three. You get two, Commissioner Harmon. That's right. And it's not it's not at the pub. It's at the parking lot next to the next pub. To the but pub. yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking it was in the pub. Yeah, you're right. That didn't sound right. They, they, they measure time in the, in the bar stool. Oh, that's oh, it. That's right. it. Um, Commissioner that's one way to generate some revenue. Oh. There you go. Um, Chief. Yes, sir. Um, being somewhat familiar with technology, um, the amount they're charging for a modem kit is, oh, what's the word, expensive? I mean, like highly. And my other question is, given the rollout of the new five technology, which is going to eliminate the capability of twos and threes completely uh, from certain devices, mm -hmm. um, what is our assurances as far as longevity or upgradability of this without spending this every time, you know, Verizon or somebody changes their technology and why the hell are they so expensive? That's a very good question. <laughs> to answer your question, I would have to follow up with them to get an explanation why so I can better answer your question. I, I would appreciate it. I mean, it's, I don't remember See, so we're, spending that kind of money on a modem. <laughs> what we're going to do is it's like we do the other one. If you can get us an explanation. Sure. And then, you know, we can maybe move on that next Wednesday. So I'm going to pass on that right now. Do you guys want to take a vote? Or do you want that information first? Well, it'd be nice to have the information. All right. So we're going to move on. I'm sure um, we'll get that to you, Commissioner. All right. Great. So we're going to move on and recommend the Board of Commission approval of purchase order from Strategic inter, inter, Intervention. Oh, I can't even say that word. Investigative. Investigative resources in the amount of $2,625 for the polygraph examination of seven potential new hires. Any questions? 
Seeing none, I'm going to call for the uh, approval of item 1K. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Thank Mr. Chairman. You. Yes, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Did we, set a, did we set a record for expenditures in public safety tonight? <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's the we, beginning of the year. We're getting them all in at once. It seems like. Yes, 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 we did. Yes, we did. Okay. We don't normally do that. Um, so the next two items, which is police recognition, recognition I'm going to turn that over to our chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I just There was two items that came to light here that I just wanted the board to be aware of and, and the public to be aware of. What was a recognition we received from uh, Springfield Township, um, except uh, recogn uh, recognizing our officers, Edward Farrell and Officer Brian Walsh for their actions responding to a suicidal armed subject on Tuesday, November 23rd at 2208 hours uh, and located in New Orleans section of Springfield Township. It came to their aid. The male was uh, allegedly intoxicated, threatening to kill himself. Officer Farrell and Officer Walsh assisted with establishing the perimeter and negotiating with the male. Officer Walsh, using a family member's phone, was able to uh, talk to the male, have him exit the house where he was taken and successfully into custody without incident. Um, and uh, Ch Chief Mike Pitcow just wanted to express his appreciation to officers and the professionalism they displayed on uh, November 23rd, 2021. Thank you, Chief. And the next one? Yes, I could. Uh, the next one was a, it was a letter we received from uh, a resident, uh, Nina Watson, she was uh, acknowledging uh, efforts and to commending one of our officers, Justin Sneeringer, um, on a uh, job he handled on uh, December 17th, 2021, uh, when uh, Ms. Watson's husband, um, who suffers from a dementia, left the apartment, was wandering around. Um, our department uh, did a fantastic job, according to Ms. Watson, of locating her husband um, and uh, making arrangements to reunite them with him. Um, she just wanted to acknowledge that the officer went over and above and did a great job in, in uh, safeguarding her husband. And she just wanted to let us know her appreciation on a great job done by Officer Justin Sneerger. Great. Very nice. All right. So that's the last item um, for our report from the police chief. Yes. Um, any questions before we move on? All right, seeing none, we're gonna move on now to report to the fire marshal, um, Mr. Scott Lynch. Thank you, chief. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Good evening, Scott. Um, fire board minutes and the uh, November fire reports. Is there any questions on that? Any questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, you can move on, Scott. Okay, so just two things to add real quick. Um, in Febu February 14th of this year, uh, the state is going to adopt the 2018 international codes. These are the codes that we currently adopt and enforce. So uh, at the February commissioners meeting, um, we uh, will be, uh, hopefully you'll approve a resolution to adopt the 2018 codes. We'll go from the 2015 to the 2018 codes. Um, I'm working with Tom, uh, Signali on that, and uh, we'll have all the paperwork presented for you. Um, is there any questions right. on that? Right, yes, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner Zingmatha. Um, Fire Marshal Lynch, I'm wondering if there are any meaningful differences uh, in the code between 15 and 18 that would be relevant for the board or the public to know. Uh, not really. Um, it, it's more for the code officials. Um, they've tightened up some of the language and um, some of the uh, simple stuff they've taken out. But um, one thing that's very clear is uh, and they put it into 15 codes and they've carried it over to the 18 codes is all of the life safety stuff is the same. Um, in the 18, there's some things that are a little more stringent um, on both the building code, the residential code and the fire code. Um, but uh, nothing that is really going to affect anything. Um, so any, any projects that are currently underway now were submitted under the 2015 code. They will be completed under the 2015 code. And then uh, after we adopt the 18 codes in February, anything submitted from that point on will then be under the 18 code. So Thank technically, you. they're grandfathered for the 15 code if they're in transit right now. Uh, yeah, so uh, Ashburn Meadows is under the 15 right. code. We'll continue. Um, and then um, 
what were the the other two um, issues in zoning right now with um, Edgemore Road and Caversham Road, they'll continue under the 15 because their stuff was submitted under the 15 code. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, and the only other thing I want to add is um, we were uh, we had our five year accessibility audit uh, last week. The state L and I um, notifies us. They come down and they uh, go through our paperwork with accessibility issues through the ADA Act. Um, they pick three recently completed projects and then uh, take the inspector um, out and uh, just review it. Uh, Tom went out. Our building inspector went out with them, and uh, so did uh, our third party inspector because our uh, accessibility reviews and everything like that are done through third party. And um, we had absolutely no issues and we passed with flying collars. So we're good for another five years with the accessibility stuff. And I just wanted to take a minute with that and commend uh, Tom Signalia, who does a fantastic job in our building and codes department and uh, our accessibility stuff. And also our third party inspection agency um, also does a pretty good job with us too. Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think uh, we had talked about the um, bringing to the public and then also on our website, uh, an update, uh, just reminding people about the importance of smoke detectors based especially on the uh, recent publicity about the fires. So, um, uh, Mr. Fire Marshal, if you would please uh, talk to the public of, and to the record about uh, where they can get smoke detectors and mm -hmm. uh, all the uh, highlights of that. Uh, absolutely. Um, obviously, it's all over the news. It's national news. There's been two horrific tragedies recently, one in Philadelphia and one in New York, where um, a lot of people died in the fire um, for the circumstances that, uh, you know, was presented on the news. Um, the, the Cheltenham Township Fire Department, which is our volunteer fire companies, Glenside Volunteer, Lamont Volunteer Fire Company, Elkins Park in Cheltenham, and my office, we all participate in the 6ABC uh, Save a Life program. And every year we're uh, given information. We go down to the Philadelphia Fire Academy and we pick up uh, an allotment of uh, smoke detectors. The smoke detectors are 10 year lithium battery smoke detectors. So you kind of put it up and you leave it alone for 10 years. Um, for our residents of Cheltenham Township, you can uh, always contact my office um, at the township building and um, we will come out and um, install smoke detectors in your home in the proper locations free of charge. Uh, and uh, usually in this, in all cases, I uh, am able to bring up somebody from the local fire department out um, and uh, we give you a little talk on the best what, what to do and things like that. But yeah, just contact me at the township building if you need smoke detectors and uh, we'll, we'll make it happen for you. Thank you. Hey, hey Scott, can, is there any way we can kind of put this information out? Um, people may not contact you per se. Um, you know, I just think we need to get this out more. If this is available, um, sometimes you can't wait for them to come to you. Sometimes we have to go to them. Um, Mr. In some, in some cases, one second, Brad. Sure. So I don't know how many you have, um, uh, even if we get the school district involved because those, you know, family with the younger kids, but I think if we have this, we have to get the word out. We, we have to get the word out. And um, we might not be able to wait for them to come to us. We may have to go to them. So just sort of something that, you know, I wanted to put out there. Someone just said, you know, get the libraries involved. And I, I yeah. agree, we need to get the word out. Mary Kay just said that. Yeah, we can. Uh, so what I can do is write up, uh, I can write something up. We can get that to libraries. Each individual fire company has it on or will put it on their website. Um, I can get it to the schools. Uh, you know, um, and uh, usually when there's a community outreach, uh, the fire companies, if the fire company's involved in it, they always take stuff with them and talk it up also. But yeah, that's okay. fine. I can, uh, um, okay. 
I can do that. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Pransky. Yeah, uh, several years ago, uh, in conjunction with uh, the Red Cross and the fire departments, we did exactly that. We did a smoke detect drive in the ward here, and we installed them in several uh, homes in the area. And uh, we did some photography with it. And I know it was all on the township website way back when, but it should, it should be up there somewhere, if only on the margin stating that, you know, if you need a smoke detector, you know, contact the township, whatever, give them a way to reach out so that this could be accomplished. I mean, we did it as a single organized event, but given what's going on, it should just be out there generally. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Okay. So I will, um, I will uh, write something up and uh, through Bob and Lauren, we'll get it up on the website. I'll talk to the chiefs to get it out there. I'll get something to the school district. I'll get something to the libraries. And um, I see Ken just put something up in chat. Can I, Ken, what did you, something about the school districts already? The school districts, um, it used to be called the Thursday packet, um, but now it depends on each school. And we've used it before for EMS stuff. Um, and you can put a flyer in it with all the information and that will go to every student. Um, I'm, just so you know, Commissioner Brockington also, um, we did in the middle of COVID just put up a winter fire safety thing that hit I about 3,000 people. And yes. at the end of it, I think it said, call the fire marshal's office um, with mm -hmm. questions. We can certainly do the same thing more specifically to smoke detectors. Detectors, I think would be great. That would I think be great. everybody. I think everybody should take note of the fact that when uh, Ken spoke up, he subtly said some messaging to us up here in the cold north about his short sleeve shirt. But that's okay. Hey, he's showing those guns. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we're being recorded, so I won't say anything. Um, great discussion. <laughs> And um, Thank you. No, we can get that information out by absolutely. Yeah, Thank I you. definitely. Yeah, I definitely want to get yeah. that out. So I'm going to call for the approval of the report for the fire marshal for the month of November 2021. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. We're moving on to item three, report of the emergency med medical service director, Mr. Ken Shortsleeve Hillendahl. <laughs> Good evening. Good um, evening, sir. I knew I shouldn't have worn this. Um, so, um, as, as the report said, um, and the numbers have all gotten worse, not better since I wrote this, um, um, the five to eight calls a week that are COVID went out the window. It's um, way over that now. Um, last Sunday, we did nine calls and every one of them was COVID positive. Um, so, um, it is also taking the toll on not just our ambulance, but other ambulances. At one point, we had half the full-time staff out with COVID. Um, a couple Sundays ago, there were three ambulances in Montgomery, in Eastern Montgomery County. Fortunately, we were one of them. Um, we have never gone off staff, which um, got to compliment the officers. They're doing a great job. Um, you know, Second Alarmers has uh, five stations and we spent half our night covering them because they had one ambulance in Willow Grove and one in Whitpain. That was it. And I don't fault them. They're losing staff also. Um, if you get complaints about extended um, response times, please call me. We will check them. We got one that said it was 35 minutes. It was eight minutes. Um, we, we have all the times they're recorded, but there are some extended response times now. Um, it's taking us an average of longer than 35 minutes to clear the hospitals because there is no place to put the patients we're bringing in. Um, we have posted it a couple of times. I encourage you to pass the word. Uh, it's on our, it's on the emergency management Facebook page. Um, if you have the sniffles or you need a COVID test, don't go to the emergency department. Um, and I know that sounds, you know, like common sense, but um, the waiting time at Elkins Park last week was six hours and it was 16 hours at Abington. So, and I don't blame them. They're just overwhelmed. 
Um, we are still working with the county. There is no resolve to the um, closing hospitals. Um, it's It would be easier for them at this point to tell us what hospitals are open. Um, the majority of the hospitals in the county are closed. There are no ICU beds. Um, and so anybody who tells you COVID is not a problem, please give them my number. Um, the good news of the month is uh, and it, it, there will be more reports because there is a secondary and a tertiary meeting coming is that we're making real progress with the mental health issues that I've discussed before. Um, we're getting some free and better training for the EMS responders working very closely with the chief and a couple of his guys and really making progress uh, on specific cases to Cheltenham as well as responses. Um, it looks like with a change in the law, um, we may be able to take mental health patients to a mental health facility rather than a hospital. And the whole goal here is that we don't feel like we're doing a good job for the patient. We're taking them to a hospital that's overwhelmed with COVID and we, we can do better. And so we've got a real advocate at the county that the chief knows and things are going really well. So um, there was some upbeat stuff this month. Um, happy to answer any questions and that's all for the report. Any questions before we move on to item 3A? Commissioner Pransky. Well, this, this, this is about, uh, I think it's 4A, isn't it? And this is 3A. Uh, no, my, my question is about four. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, this is three. One ahead. I'm one ahead. Sorry. That's okay. okay. Any questions at all? So we're going to move to item 3A, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order from Whitmere Pu Public Safety Group in the amount of $5,088.55 for the purchase of the EMS badges. Um, we haven't bought new badges in 20 years plus half of our staff doesn't have them. This is actually money that was budgeted in the 21 capital budget and due to lack of staff and COVID and time, we just got to it. We got the quotes um, and this was the lowest reasonable quote. Um, and again, we asked about delivery and they said, well, so we're hoping for three months. Imagine. Any questions? We don't. You know, stinking I questions. was waiting for you, yeah, Mr. Bransky. I, I, I was looking at I your was, face. I said, it's going to come out. <laughs> I was waiting on that. <laughs> Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, I just, I, I wasn't sure what those badges are and how many of them. Because I thought it said one unit and I wasn't I know, sure. I know. What, it's what for really big badge. Um, all of our staff have badges for their uniforms. Um, it, it's, it's part of every EMS. I mean, like police have them, we have them. And I believe this is, uh, 30 badges. Um, so the officers get them, the full-time people get them and the part-time people get them and we get them when they get back. It hasn't been a matter of them being stolen after 20 plus years. They just fall apart. And each person gets a series of them. No, no, no. Each person gets there one. is one badge. Right. Per person. Correct. So the badges are, are $180 each? Uh, I, I believe it's like 81 each, yes. Well, that got to be more than that. It's $170. Yeah, be more. I, I can get you. I thought I had attached it here, but it's not here. I, I can get you the exact pricing per badge um, and, and quantity, but it, it, it was between $70 and $80 a piece. And these are part of the uniform or these are in a pocket to be shown? No, 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 no. These are worn on the shirt, except in the summertime when we allow them to wear a, a lighter shirt during short, certain um, public events. And this is not something that can be substituted by a badge that is sewn on or something like that? Um, we have looked at that and done that in some cases, but... Um, I think it's something that still needs to be part of the uniform because we also have dress uniforms for certain events and, and those require badges. So I'm getting confused now. This is a metal badge or is this? Yes. Okay. No, no, this is a metal badge. Okay. Is, if, you look at what the, if you look at what the, what the chief's wearing, it's similar to that. And, and they are required 
in what sense or by whom or whatever. It's, I just want to understand it. Right. Required would be a, they have been part of the EMS fire and police world as long as I've been in it. And um, we we wear them, you know, every day that somebody is working, as I said, with the exception of the summer. Uh, and in the summer, if we have funerals or special events where they get awards and stuff, uh, then they're in their full dress uniform and it's mandated. Um, and the only reason we're asking for new ones is after, I think it was 24 years, the other ones just have fallen apart. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns for commissioners? And just a curiosity about the, the cost. I mean, while we were talking, I went out and just did a search for EMS badges and they're just, the most expensive one I saw was $89. And I'm just trying to figure out these people in particular, this vendor, what are they doing? I mean, this, you know, it, it, I'm, they I'm, are all the, you, you can buy a standard badge that just says emergency medical service. These say Cheltenham on them. They're numbered so that we can track them um, and also have rank on it for those of us that have rank. All right. So they're very customized. Um, I wouldn't say very customized. It's what every service does so you can track it. And so it has your name on it, meaning Cheltenham Township. And it's a form of identification when patients see us because the only other. Oh, no, I, un I understand the purpose of the badge. Right. It was this vendor's price for the badge that had me a little bit concerned. This, this was the least expensive of three vendors. In the wrong business. And I can, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to share with the board. Um, hopefully, I can get it tomorrow. The exact breakdown of quantity and cost. I just didn't bring it with me. Well, thank you, Chief. I, 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 I appreciate it, Ken. But I, I was just thrown by. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call for the approval of item three A. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right. So now I'm going to call for the approval of the report of the EMS service director for the month of December 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good. Now we're going to move on to item four, report from the emergency management coordinator for the month of October 2021. Ken? Um, uh, so... I won't go through it again. Our biggest thing has been COVID uh, um, emergency management. As you've all seen, um, we have completely rewritten the township's policy, um, trying to stay in line with CDC, who, as somebody said the other day, as soon as they hit the send key on a policy, they want to change it a week later. Um, and um, we are now in the process of tracking um, all the employees uh, that have gotten COVID, uh, the number just since January 1 is almost 40 township employees that have either been exposed or um, gotten COVID. Um, and we are tracking them all while working towards the process of those that aren't vaccinated, um, starting the testing program, which will start on January 30th, I believe it is. Um, Mid-month, CDC changed the process, so you are now not considered vaccinated unless you have two shots and the booster. So that significantly changed things um, in the policy. Um, I met with the union um, at the yard, answered a bunch of questions for them, um, and um, we that's COVID has consumed most of the month. Um, as it said in the report, one of the things, and um, we think it's been helpful according to Chief, um, and thanks to the Chief and Jennifer Clark, we've moved the sign boards around on a very regular basis with some catchy notices to slow down speeding. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know if it's working, but people seem to like it and people seem to slow down. Um, and the other thing is, and we will have a, a much more of a, a firm accounting um, in a month or so, 
Um, we received um, all of the overtime back from Lower Providence Township, or I'm sorry, Upper Providence Township. Um, they sent us a check for all of the overtime that um, the manager was kind enough to allow um, to send five people up there to clean up after their massive flooding. They paid that back in full out of their pocket, not FEMA or Pima, which was very nice. Um, and Kim has been um, working almost full time on uh, getting money back from Ida. Um, and it will be significant dollars. I don't want to quote what it is yet, um, but we have put in for all the flooding along Tukany road damage um, and um, all the overtime related to Ida that we expect to get back, including what we did for other townships. So it's Fantastic. been a busy month to say the least. Fantastic. Any questions? Commissioner Armin. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I just want to take a moment and thank Ken and Kim and, and township staff for, for really sort of being uh, on, on your toes with, with all that's going on with COVID. I, I, as you said, every time you put something out, something changes, you have to pivot. Uh, and, and I know it's, um, it's a lot of work, um, but, but it is essential. It's important, um, not only for everyone's uh, well-being, but in order to maintain township services. So, um, uh, so thank you for, for all your efforts in that regard. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? No, we're going to move on to item 4A. I recommend the Board of Commission approve an emergency purchase order for Sunline supplies in the amount of $7,600 for the purchase of COVID-19 test kits and Mr. invoice Chair. is attached. Commissioner Norris. Uh, yes, uh, Ken, can you remind us, my recollection is that we currently have a policy that mandates uh, all employees be vaccinated or if not vaccinated, that there's uh, a testing that has to occur. Uh, my question is, uh, is there any cost incurred by the employee for the no. testing? No, there is not. And let, let me explain these tests. So we have a bank of tests that we have set aside that now won't be enough for the employee testing. Before CDC changed the rules, our best guess was eight to 10 people that were not considered vaccinated. It's now closer to 40 or more. They got one shot and stopped. No, no, who had two shots but didn't oh, get the booster. The booster. You are oh, no yeah. longer considered vaccinated if you don't have the booster. Gotcha. And so we are in the process of collecting everybody's cards. We won't know until next week exactly how many people we have to test. Now, we're pushing people to get the booster, but that's a CDC change. What how, these, how are we pushing them? What? What incentive do they have to, to get the to get vaccinated if there's no cost on them? We we pay for the tests. Um, several departments have done creative things to get people to be tested. And frankly, um, a couple of things have happened where people have gotten really sick. And um, you know, recently someone has died that was part of the township family in the past, and that's starting to hit home with people. All right, to clarify, that wasn't because he got the booster. No, it was because <laughs> he was not vaccinated. That's, I know, but the way you, way you right. phrased no, it, I'm it sounds like... So, no, so, so peer pressure is working, Commissioner. The numbers are going down because people are getting really sick. There, there are a couple of police officers right now who have had the vaccine, maybe not the booster, who are pretty sick. And the word is getting out. Um, and so does that answer the question? I mean, we are doing our best. I, I have a question in relation to this. Um, I, I'm all in favor of, you know, the tests and getting the shots. My question is this, um, the insurance requirements, regulations, et cetera, uh, are being changed coming out of Washington, including the fact that insurance companies will now have to pay 
for the COVID tests. And the government, hopefully in the next week or two, is going to be shipping out a couple billion of them. Um, it's this question of waiting a week and not having to spend the money. No, we will be reimbursed for all of the tests we bought. Okay. All of these are reimbursed. Well, then Kim, has, Kim, Kim, has, Kim has already started that project. And the, the millions that the government is shipping out, um, we looked into that before we bought these. Yeah. And that is more of a complicated process. I can discuss it with you offline. They're not. No, just no, sorry. I take your moment. word for it. Um, so um, we will be reimbursed for all of these. Um, so the board knows. We, with the manager's approval, we bought these a week ago. We wanted to wait until this week to get your approval. And the people that we've been buying from at Sunline, who have been wonderful, said, we can't hold them for you. They will be gone. And we didn't want to take that chance. What are we spending um, those nine and a half dollars a test or something? Um, I couldn't well, tell. There were two invoices there, and I couldn't quite tell right. if you were paying so 15 in change or nine in change. We, we bought, you, you already approved previously, um, 500 tests. Those are the ones we're using on people. We bought 500 more, and then talked to the manager, realized we're going through those really quickly, and I'll explain why. And we bought point. another 500. All right, so, so those invoices are just for 500. They're not, they're not doubles, because like Binax gives you two, the other ones give you a single. No, no, no. These are individual kits boxed 20 or 25. And right. what we are doing to try and prevent further damage is that if someone comes in and says, I think my wife has COVID, we will give you a test to take home. Because if she does, and that person then comes back to work- Then they have to be quarantined, I understand. Right, so, and there are no tests out there. And I think two things, I think it was a great idea that the manager had to do this, that the staff is very happy, and so are we, because if people have COVID, they're not coming in. And you know, we are we've been very clear with people this isn't for you when you go on vacation, this isn't for your son's soccer game. And I don't think anybody's used it more than the police department. And it's been invaluable in in getting people that don't have COVID to work and not bringing, I mean, the, the problem is we've had infections, and I don't want to pick on the chief, but where three people were in the same room and they were all out. So that's what these are being used for. Um, and I suspect we will buy more and we will be reimbursed. Excellent, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna call for the approval of item 4A. All in favor say aye. 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 So we're gonna move on to 4B, recommend the Board of Commission approve a purchase order to New Holland Auto Group in the amount of $34,660 for the purchase of a 2022 Dodge Ram 1500 for a new EMA vehicle. Invoices attached. Ken? Um, Kim is, I guess I should say some good news. Kim and her baby are coming home on the 18th. Marvelous. That's good, Marvelous. So, good news. So after um, 166 days in ICU and another two months, uh, another two week, another two months in the hospital, they're coming home and she's coming back to the office. In the new so, pickup truck? Um, well, hopefully. Um, so Kim is driving a 2010 Ford Escape that we it was a hand-me-down. We can't even tow with it anymore. Nothing fits in it. Um, I asked her because the price is for a pickup truck and um, you know, a Ford Explorer were about the same. She goes, I can't put barricades in a Ford Explorer. I can put them in a pickup truck. So um, this was her request. We made a really good deal on this. We oh, are getting yeah. This. We are getting thousand for that? Yeah, you did. Uh, we, are, we are getting it at 2021 pricing. Um, when we called to get the quote, um, this vehicle was ordered as a 21 um, Dodge and something happened. This vehicle is $39,800 um, today. And it, we are getting a 22 because Dodge couldn't deliver the 21. And so- You're saving five uh, grand. Yes. 
and it's under budget. There is still money in the budget for the emergency equipment, but it is under budget. That's Any it. additional questions? Uh, item 4B? No, just kudos on that. That was terrific. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'm gonna call for the approval of item 4B. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Um, so now I'm gonna call for the approval of report of our E emergency management coordinator for the month of October, 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Ken. Thank you Thank very you. much, sir. Thank you for all you guys do. Go back on vacation. <laughs> public safety, um, we're gonna open up item five, any old business for public safety. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Holland. Yep, not, not so much old business. I just wanted to point out uh, something in reference to the, uh, the testing kit ordering. Um, on one invoice, the uh, bill to and the ship to uh, addresses are the same, which is the township address. On the secondary invoice, uh, the bill to is the township address and the ship to is what it looks to be is potentially Ken's address. So Ken, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. So um, the first set of kits that we bought, UPS lost somewhere at the township building. So I had the second set shipped to my house. And the last two, we've actually, this company is located in Bridgeport and we have picked up the last two so that UPS wouldn't lose them. Yep, th thank you. Uh, great. Any other old business for public safety? Hearing and seeing none, we're gonna move on to any new business for public safety. All right, we're gonna move on to citizen forum for public safety. Allison? Any hands up, any citizens formed for public safety? Any citizens? I do not see any. Okay, I'm gonna call for the adjournment for tonight's public safety committee meeting. So moved. All those, those in favor say favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Commissioner Rappaport is all yours. 